Hello everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. I have been waiting to do this video for so freaking long, you guys have no idea. I actually planned this months ago, and I've been patiently waiting for the right moment, and it is here! I'm going to be reacting to Marilyn Monroe's skincare routine. Yes, the Marlin we all know and love. Marlon Monroe. And I know that you guys are sitting back thinking, wait, how how is that possible? Ain't she dead? <laughs> yes, she is. But this is somewhat of a collaboration style video. Let me explain. When I first got on TikTok, I immediately discovered this wonderful creator named Jasmine Chiswell. And what she does is create vintage style TikToks. She dresses in all vintage clothing. She talks about what life was like back in the 1950s and 60s. She's basically like a vintage cosplayer and I live for every single one of her TikToks. But the awesome thing about Jasmine is that not only does she she dress in vintage, she looks almost exactly like Marilyn Monroe, like it's scary how similarly she looks, and she lives in Marilyn Monroe's house. Like what are the freaking chances? So cool. And I have to say, I am a person who loves the 1950s and 1960s, but I'm not the type of person who's like, oh my god, I was born in the wrong generation. I was supposed to be born in the 1950s. Um, no bitch, the amount of racism, prejudice, and anti-gayness in that time period was rampant. And I don't have any desire to go back to that day and age, but I think there are amazing things about that era, like the fashion, the different fun trends, pop culture, Hollywood culture, and Jasmine really embodies that, which is what makes her TikTok so fun. And honestly, if I could, I'd be right there wearing those vintage style dresses as well if I didn't look like a moose in a dress. Some people were more meant for that than me. <laughs> the reason why it circles back is because about, I think, two months ago, Marilyn Monroe's skincare routine was leaked online. It was found in some of Marilyn Monroe's records. I don't know the exact story behind it, but I didn't look at the routine and I was like, oh my gosh, how fun would it be if Jasmine were to create a video documenting Marilyn Monroe's skincare routine and I was to react to it? It. And I think it's kind of a fun way to pay tribute to Marilyn Monroe because in my opinion, she's one of the most misunderstood celebrities. Like growing up, my first awareness with Marilyn Monroe was a lot of um shaming and a lot of negativity surrounding her, which I don't agree with whatsoever because it's solely based on sexism. But I also have a fun story about Marilyn Monroe that I want to tell you guys. So stay tuned for that. But let's just get right into this. I am ready to react to this video. By the way, I'll have Jasmine's video linked in the description box below as well as her socials so you can go follow her. If you are not aware of who I am, I am a specialist who's worked in the industry for years. I eat and breathe skincare all day long and it is my passion, but I am not an esthetician or a dermatologist, nor do I ever, ever, ever claim to be one or know more than either of them. If you do have any struggles in your skin that you're wanting to get treated, please go to your local esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. These videos that I make are just for fun and just to educate about skincare. and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hi Jasmine. So today <laughs> we're going to be looking into Marlon Monroe's skincare routine. So I was sent some of her products Ooh, by okay. Erin Laszlo, which was her favorite dermatologist where she would get a lot of her skincare oh. products. Here we go. So in the morning, um, Marlon would apply active, I think it's called Filatel, with a large piece of cotton saturated to the dripping point on the entire face. Okay, so okay. Wow. here it's here. I use a lot of cleansing oils as well myself. Oh, nice. Yay. Um, it seems to work really well with my skin and mm -hmm. if you have acne, um, oils is actually good to put on your skin mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like and this is what she used. So I do know that they have kept all of these products that she would use just the same. Um, they might have That's changed so maybe cool. a few ingredients that might not have been okay for today but it's pretty much the same product and you can still buy it. So I'm gonna definitely give this one a try. So that's actually really cool. I like that they've kept the names of the products ever since they were first introduced or whenever Marilyn Monroe used them. And I will say first off, as we start into this, I'm familiar with Erno Lazo. I've talked about a few of their products in my videos before, and I will say they are very expensive. I mean, the products will be like 130 to $200 each, which is like, <laughs> <laughs> Mama, that's a lot. And from what I remember, their products do include fragrance, which honestly is not really a surprise at that price point because most products at that price point, it, it's shocking if they don't include fragrance because most people who want to spend that much money on skincare want to have that, this really transforming aromatic experience when they put on their skincare routine, which I'm like, I mean, you do you, but that's not me. You guys know I don't like fragrance, but here's one thing I will say as well. Going into this, I already know that I'm not crazy about Ernalazo products for the reasons I just mentioned, but consider what time period this is. This is way back in the 1950s, I believe, and skincare then was not what it is now. Most of the time back then, you, you would be lucky if you have like a cleansing cream and a moisturizer. That's like a full-blown skincare routine. Most people are not taking care of their skin, so the fact that she not only used like one product, but multiple products to take care of her skin back then, and was going to a dermatologist for her skin issues is really, really impressive. 
positive. So I have to give credit where credit is due because the expectations I have for now currently do not even compare to what my expectations were for that point in time. So if it seems like I'm being a little less harsh, that's why. So I'm gonna look up the ingredients for this. Philatile pre-cleansing oil. Okay, awesome. If you guys are familiar with cleansing oils, I talk about them all the time on my channel because I think they're way better than the standard makeup wipe because they really help to break away all the makeup on the skin. And definitely back in those days, <laughs> movie stars were wearing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of makeup every single day. So making sure you were adequately removing it is best. And honestly, people today still haven't even figured out that cleansing oils are much better than say something like a makeup wipe. So the fact that she and Erna Lazo were already doing this is like, Bravo, ma'am. In terms of ingredients, the primary ingredient is mineral oil, which I'm not super surprised, especially considering how old this product is. Mineral oil is a very kind of old fashioned ingredient that works well to not only help moisturize the face, but also to break up any dirt and oil on the skin. I don't necessarily look for mineral oil, but I also don't necessarily avoid it because it's not a bad ingredient, even though a lot of companies and people like to demonize it and make it out to be like this toxic, terrible, horrific ingredient. Just show me where the unbiased scientific studies are and I will agree with you. But until that happens, I don't agree with you. <laughs> the second ingredient is safflower seed oil, which is a good hydrating oil. Hoo-hoo. Okay, but the third ingredient is fragrance. Wow, 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 wow. That is crazy. That is a lot of fragrance, let me just say right there. Now, you guys know I am okay with fragrance in a wash off treatment, like a cleansing oil or a cleanser, because you're only leaving it on your skin for 30 seconds and then rinsing it off afterwards. So the risk of any irritation from fragrance in a product is immediately washed off. But the third ingredient? <sighs> The third ingredient. Yeah, no, I would not use this product. <laughs> it just has a very high concentration, which is the shame because the other ingredients are like apricot oil, avocado oil, hazel seed oil, jojoba oil, sesame seed oil, sunflower seed oil. Amazing, amazing ingredients. All of those are really good for deeply nourishing the face. But even looking, the other fragrance ingredients it has are citral, citrulinol, coumarin, eugenol, geraniol, limonene, linalool. Yeah, this has a shit ton of fragrant essential oils in it. And I'm not about that. So no, I personally wouldn't use this oil, but it is encouraging to see that she is using a cleansing oil to get rid of all the makeup on her face before going in with her skincare routine. Then you go in with this soap. So this is, um, this is just a, okay. They're really testing my like, <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> Uh, Philatel um, Cleansing Bar. I don't know. I just like the color. That's okay. I'm terrible at pronunciations too, girl. <laughs> so this no worries. this is like a cleansing soap. Now, I have never used mm. a cleansing soap because it kind of freaks me out. Um, <laughs> but this is the one that she used. So it says that you want to use some warm water, put the soap, um, and fill a basin with warm water. Okay, so we need like a bowl. Mm. Okay, and we fill it with warm water, we wet the face and neck, and then you rub the soap to create a lather and put it all over your face and then rinse it with the water and blow it dry. Interesting. It has the old like Vogue picture on it. Okay, oh, that's cute. Like this. Okay, so it's from 1927. This is amazing. Wow, look at this. 1927. Like, look at the packaging, you guys. So there's your soap. That's cute, it's so it's cute. Just... Okay, I can't really smell it. I'm like smelling the paper, like that okay. is not gonna smell. Oh, that's good. Like if you can't smell anything, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Okay, it smells actually really, really good. So here oh, is what shit. it would look like in this <laughs> Oh well, we won for a little bit. Okay, so I have it pulled up here. It's $38, which for a cleansing bar. Oof. That's expensive. Oh, but in the description, it says that they did update their packaging to feature 0% plastic, so. Good job, Renalaza, we love that. So the ingredients are first sodium palmate and sodium palm kernelate. Ooh. You know, I'm feeling iffy about that. So if you aren't familiar with those ingredients, those are both derivatives of palm oil. And palm oil is an ingredient known for its unsustainable sourcing and potential abuse surrounding it. Because palm oil is actually the reason for a lot of deforestation in rainforests, labor abuses, stuff like that. And I'm not gonna say that every single brand who uses palm oil is guilty of this. And not every derivative of palm oil is bad. There are some derivatives that can be synthetically produced that are fine. But usually the higher concentration there is, the more they're using, which is only increases the risk for abuse. So I'm not saying that Erna Lazo or whoever their suppliers are are guilty of that, but it is something to be aware of, which is usually why I try to avoid palm oil in products where I can. This also has safflower seed oil as well and fragrance again, which is the one, two, three, four, fifth ingredient. Erna Lazo loves its fragrances. Besides that, the ingredient list isn't too bad. This is honestly what I would expect for an old fashioned cleansing bar. But I have to say, it's so encouraging to see Marilyn Monroe going in with a double cleansing system, which honestly, people who are watching this take note because the majority of people, I say a good 90% of the population is not double cleansing their skin. There's more you guys. So, <laughs> okay. So it says, um, apply well shaken normalizer, shake it with a large piece of cotton saturated to the dripping point on the entire face. 
except around the eyes, blot off with tissues immediately. Okay. So. Why do they have to make the description so damn fancy? I'm like, I didn't understand any of that. Like at all. Can you dumb it down a bit for me, please? <laughs> I'm just joking. Obviously that's the time period. Get it. So shake it, the shake it treatment actually was discontinued. I think it was discontinued not oh, that no. long ago, but it had been around for years and years. And Marilyn used it. A lot of other celebrities like Audrey Hepburn also used this. So they brought oh, no it way. back and it's actually the package really cute. Oh. This like a little wax. Kind of yeah, that's really but pretty. This is, I think, was like a toner, like a treatment. Um, it also has a color in it, so I guess it's kind of like a tinted moisturizer without it being a tinted moisturizer, if you know what I mean. Oh, it's like a tinted thing. okay, interesting. Um, wow. You do give it a shake and you put it all over a cotton pad and you put it all over your face. Now, I did see on the box, because I did read this earlier, that if you want the color to come out more, then you should put like a second coat. So it's kind of like matte your face if you like a matte look. It's meant to help with that. I do have really oily skin, so that huh. might help. That's actually a really cool concept for a product. I've never heard about that before. You know, the, the benefit of a tinted moisturizer is that you get a little bit of coverage, a little bit of color to offset any redness or dullness in the skin, but usually they come in cream forms. In a liquid form, that's actually pretty interesting and kind of innovative. I've yet to see a product like that exist today. But of course, let me look at the ingredient list I need to see. Okay, so for ingredients, oh. <laughs> <sighs> You know what? I called it. I knew it. I, I I knew it in the back of my head. I was like, Hiram, this is going to happen. Prepare yourself. So the second ingredient is denatured alcohol, which I somewhat expected, especially considering that they were advertising this to be for oily skin. Denatured alcohol is an ingredient typically used to like get rid of all the excess sebum on the surface of the skin. And when you use a product that has a high concentration of denatured alcohol, it makes your skin look really nice because it's mattified. It looks even and smooth. The problem with using it at high concentrations is that over time, it can really strip your skin and contribute to a dehydrated moisture barrier. Also, I have a sensitivity to denatured alcohol and being that there's so many other good ingredients that help to reduce sebum on the surface of the skin without overly stripping it, I'm like, why is it the second ingredient in products, you know? And it also has isopropyl alcohol, oof. <laughs> you know what, in the description of this, they said that this formula is straight from the archives and no offense, Erno Lazo, but I can tell. Talc is one of the primary ingredients, which is probably where you get that tint. There is glycerin, but fragrance is also high on the ingredient list. It has citral, citrulinol, eugenol, geraniol, hydroxycitrullinolol, limonene, limonene, a little so 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 many fragrant ingredients um yeah you know what i like the concept of this product but from an ingredient perspective this is definitely kind of like the epitome of a product where i'd be like nope i would not personally use this product because this looks like sensitivity galore but again like i said before i'm not going too hard because marilyn monroe was way ahead of us and i know that if my ass lived back in that time period i'd probably just be using water and a salt scrub for my face dab dual face face powder over the entire face and neck and brush off the powder with a large piece of cotton. That product has been discontinued, sadly, okay. so we can do that part, but we do have everything up to there, but for that part, you can just dab on um, just some regular powder, like Laura Mercier mm -hmm. translucent powder would work. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yes. So let's get on to the evening, because this sounds like something extra. <laughs> okay, Ooh, so I've just okay. Been reading... I love evening. Oh yeah, fun story I was gonna say and why my respect for Marilyn Monroe went significantly up. If you didn't know, I love listening to jazz music. It is like my guilty pleasure. And one of my favorite singers of all time is Ella Fitzgerald. Her voice, her aura, oh, everything about her was just incredible. But Ella Fitzgerald was black. And at that time in history, hello super fucking racist. Marilyn Monroe absolutely loved Ella Fitzgerald and Ella Fitzgerald was trying to build her presence as a musician and trying to book gigs at different nightclubs. But most of the nightclubs, I believe it was in Las Vegas or Los Angeles, I can't remember where, most of them refused to let Ella Fitzgerald perform there because she was black. Don't even get me started. I could go on a rant forever about how fucked up that is. But anyway, what Marilyn Monroe said to these nightclubs was that I will only come to your nightclub if Ella Fitzgerald performs there. If she's not performing, I'm not coming. And the reason why this was such a deal is because Marilyn Monroe was at the peak of popularity and wherever she went hordes of reporters and a ton of publicity would follow her which was really good for the nightclubs. So Marilyn Monroe really helped Ella Fitzgerald's rise to popularity because she used her privilege as a white person and celebrity to get Ella Fitzgerald performances and appearances. If that's not being an ally to the black community I don't know what is. Even Ella Fitzgerald herself said that Marilyn Monroe was way ahead of her time and honestly I stay on you for it, girl. XOXO Hiram. Okay, so evening. On formal occasions, or when photographed, uh, after blotting off Normalizer Shake It, which is this little guy, this tinted moisturizer kind of looking thing, um, apply Filatone on top of it, or entire face, also under eyes and neck. So I guess that is 
No, it's not this. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that's just some cream. <laughs> um, and then... Interesting. Put it under your eyes and neck, then blow it off with tissues and apply the powder again. Um, the same instructions as the morning. Apply the oil. So here we have the same oil as the morning. You're going to smooth active fetal cream on the entire face, lips and neck. Okay, so I actually do have that. Here is the cream here and I've actually been using it. Um, it does smell kind of good. You know, like it smells like your grand's cream or something. I guess it is old. <laughs> this stuff so it would smell like a grand's cream. It's like a thick cream. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually really like it. I've been using it for a while and it's a big tub so it does last a long time. So apparently yeah, after drying, tub. after washing your face, you apply this on entire face, lips and neck. So you're basically putting this everywhere. I just, this is something new for me. I've never put like my cream like all over my face, like underneath my eyes, my lips and my neck. Okay. Really? Wait a minute. Girl, you need to start you doing that. Rule of thumb, always good to moisturize everything to here. Face, eyes, lips, neck, chest, all of it is a good idea. Wash off the cream immediately with a large piece of oh. cotton saturated to dripping point. The dripping point is hilarious. I, I love this part. <laughs> <laughs> with huh. well shaken, um, controlling lotion. Okay, so I have the controlling lotion. Okay, this sounds really weird, but you don't take it off around the eyes and the lips. You leave it on your lips and you leave it on your eyes. Okay. So this is something new, because that's like a moisturizing <laughs> cream and they want you to yeah. basically take it off. Put it on for a second. Now you take it off. Okay, so I found the cream. It's the Active Filatel Intensive Cream, $88 for 1.7 ounces. <gasps> That's expensive, but you know, that's a little bit more doable than some of the other products that I found that are like $150. So, you know, it, it's a little better. So the first ingredient is petrolatum, which petrolatum is a very old fashioned ingredient used as a moisturizing agent. It helps to prevent trans epidermal water loss. So you're not losing water through your skin and increasing dryness. It's when I say old fashioned, it's just, it's not a very innovative ingredient. And while yes, it is effective, it can block pores of someone who's oily. And it's just one of those ingredients where I'm like, it's fine, you know, it works, but it's not very interesting to me. Second ingredient is safflower seed oil. So it looks like Erna Lazo really likes to use safflower seed oil, which I don't have a problem with. It has lanolin alcohol, which can be really irritating. It does have fragrance, but thankfully fragrance is lower on the ingredient list. Um, but that being said, it still has citra, citrullinel, coumarin, geraniol, limeline, linalool. So all those same fragrant ingredients. You know what? If I saw this at the store, I'd be like, okay, you know, this is a fine basic moisturizer. Nothing in this would really scream interest at me except for safflower seed oil, but I would say it's arguably better than the products that we've seen thus far. And I guess the benefit is, is that if you are going to be using that stripping product that had a high concentration of denatured alcohol, you are helping to moisturize your skin afterward with a product that primarily has petrolatum. So there is that benefit. My thing is that why would you rinse it off? Like if this is a moisturizing cream and obviously it's really expensive, I'm not sure why she takes it off afterwards with another product, but leaves it around her eyes and lips. Or I guess it was and Alazo who gave her these instructions. I don't know. I wonder what was going through their heads. So here is the lotion. I just love their packaging. It's just like really kind of old and vintagey looking. <laughs> um, that is the whole point, Jasmine. But anyway, <laughs> um, so basically you shake it, you put this on a cotton pad and you put this all over your face, apart from the lips and your eyes. You don't want to take it off your lips and your eyes, you guys. And then you reapply, wait a minute here, a reapply <laughs> with another large piece of cotton saturated to the dripping point with well shaking controlling lotion to cover thickly and let dry overnight. <laughs> I am Confucian. You take the cream off with this. You then put this back on. <laughs> so you're doing this like twice and then you leave it on overnight and then under eyes, on lips and neck, block cream off with tissue after 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, you're going to take the active fetal cream that you left on your lips and your eyes, you're going to take that off by blotting it after 10 minutes, once you've done everything. This is probably like the most complicated skincare routine I've ever heard of, and I've seen that many skincare routines in my time. <laughs> wow, this is so interesting, and I've never heard of a step-by-step -step process like this. You're basically taking your moisturizer off. Like, I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. Me too, Jasmine. But I'm really <laughs> eager to try it. It says, do not eat. Not one piece of any kind of nuts, olives, chocolates, clams, and oysters. Chocolate? Ch <laughs> I love that she's immediately like, chocolate? <laughs> We see your guilty pleasure, ma'am. Nuts? I wonder why nuts. Did Marilyn have a nut allergy? I don't know if I can do this routine. This routine's already out of the deal for me because I love chocolate, you guys. Like, <laughs> I love it, like, with ice cream, with frozen yogurt. Okay, 
This is like gonna be commitment to get rid of chocolate. Okay, so basically that is Marla Monroe's skincare routine and it does seem a bit lengthy and <laughs> I think it's gonna take me some time to learn it off by heart. Okay, so I think that was the most bizarre skincare routine that I have ever come across. Oh my gosh, I just realized I didn't look up the ingredients of the last product, oops. Okay, here we go. The light controlling oil for $68. Again, on par with the luxury price point. Shouldn't be surprised at this point, Hiram. Okay, for ingredients, oh my God. <gasps> Again. <laughs> so the second ingredient is denatured alcohol. The third ingredient is glycerin. So glad to see that. And the fifth ingredient is fragrance. Yeah, I can say officially that I am not a fan of these products. Let me just get into my overall thoughts of this skincare routine, what my thoughts are. So first off, like I said before, as far as good things that I like about it, I love that she was so adamantly taking care of her skin and trying to really focus on for what was available at that time taking care of her skin when, when that's something that still to this day is not prioritized by a lot of people. I love that she was using a double cleansing system and going in with a moisturizer and even using a really innovative product so like that tinted moisturizer. And I can understand say with being at events and with the lights and all that kind of stuff, reducing the shine on your face as much as possible is something that you definitely wanted. And I think she said something about how immediately after the cameras are done going in with a moisturizer afterwards, which if that's the case, I love that because she's trying to moisturize her skin as much as possible while still looking good in the cameras the lights and I love that she had a very specific nighttime skincare routine system in place because in my opinion nighttime skincare routine is when you can splurge yourself that's like the most fun part of the routine for me personally that being said I am really confused by the nighttime process that she used of like taking off some of the moisturizer on certain areas of your face and then blotting it off on your under eye area and lips my only possible explanation that I could think for that is that if she does have oily skin an ingredient like petrolatum may have blocked her pores and that might have been why she went in with the tone or afterwards that does have a high concentration of denatured alcohol to really dissolve away the excess product on the face. At the same time, you're kind of getting rid of the whole purpose of the moisturizer, which is to prevent water loss in your skin. And I have a slight feeling that that was probably a more trendy skincare thing to do rather than something that a lot of people stood behind at the time, but I could be wrong. I don't know, I wasn't alive. And obviously, according to my standards today, I would not be using any of these products personally because they do not align with my personal skincare philosophy. No sir, no ma'am. Way too much fragrance, way too much alcohol, way too many irritating ingredients ingredients and way too expensive, so not for me. But I do have to say, I respect Erna Lazo for keeping their original formulas as close to where they used to be as possible because it does give it that vintage vibe. Feel like you are using Marilyn Monroe's actual skincare routine. And there's a historical connection there, which as someone who absolutely loves history, geeks out over at Max, I appreciate that. But what do you guys think of this skincare routine? I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you think this was fun? Do you want me to do more videos like this in the future, reacting to the skincare routines of people past? And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.